Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and the Super Duty update. This is a relatively quick one because I really haven't got a lot done in the last month or so. Mostly because I have been trying to get caught up on some of the house projects that I've been ignoring for the last three years or so. All right, we'll start off on this update with an update on the fairings that I made for the back. All right, you can see here, I have this left side or pilot side fairing trimmed and it's actually just taped in place right now, but you can see how nicely it fits on here. It's got a nice bump right here where it goes over the big mounting bracket on the horizontal stabilizer and uh, it fits really nice and it looks really nice on there. You can get an idea of how much trimming is required. If you look at the one on the top that's already trimmed, and then here's the other side that has not been trimmed yet. And it's uh, quite a bit that has to be cut and trimmed and filed and sanded. And now I have the pilot or passenger side fairing trimmed also. I do want to trim a little bit more off around here. And if you look really closely, if you ever see this airplane, the, they are trimmed a little bit differently. This one seems to come down a little bit more here. I could trim it a little bit higher, but then where I would trim it is kind of right on a rivet line or right on a rivet. And I'd rather have it come down on a flat part instead of on the rivet. So, and it's just a little bit of, I think, how I laid up the, the, the putty in here and how we laid the fiberglass. It's just, it fits better how it's trimmed on this side, but it is just a tad different than the other side. But it looks really good on there. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. In a previous episode, I showed you this little fairing that I made for the back here. Now there's a lot of work I have to do to this fairing yet, it's not done, but one of my concerns was, would there be enough gap between the bottom of the rudder and then this dorsal fin here with that fairing on there? So I put the rudder on to check and I wound up having to trim a little bit off of the front of the bottom. I didn't have to trim much, and if you look really close on here, you can see a black line uh, that I drew on there to where I needed to trim it. And this also kind of straightens up the bottom of this piece here. I had it a little bit of a curve. So this straightens it up and it opens up the gap enough to where it's comfortable for me. It's not hitting the fairing and uh, it'll never bind or jam or anything like that. The Dremel tool works really nice just to get a rough cut. So after I use the, the grinding wheel on the Dremel, I'm using a file here to clean it up. And then once I'm done with that, I'll take some sandpaper, kind of slightly bevel the edges so it's not sharp, and it really cleans it up and makes it look really, really nice. Then once I'm done, I just kind of get down at eye level here and just make sure it's straight and it looks good just from an eye perspective. Then it was time to put the rudder back on and check it, make sure the gap is even and they're parallel with each other. This is an easier job with two people, but usually I'm the only one around, so I've done it myself. Once the rudder's on, you can see here, it's a nice even gap. It clears going full left and full right. It'll never hit that fairing. So I'm pretty happy with this. And I would say this part is now complete. While I have the rudder on also, I want to run these rudder cables, I think, through the fuselage because more than likely this slot here will need opened up. And on my uh, cruiser, if you guys remember, I, I made a tube that comes out of here and kind of fared it in with putty and painted it, it looks real nice. I'm not doing that on the Super Duty because I'm not looking to build a show plane with this airplane. I just want a rugged backcountry airplane. And so what I'll do is I'll open up that slot to whatever size is needed. I'll connect the rudder cables to get that position correctly. And then uh, I think these things just go on like this. And then this uh, tapered piece of aluminum goes on the outside like that and it gets riveted through there. Um, so I'm gonna use these pieces. Now what I will do with this piece is trim it up and, and make it look a lot nicer than it does now. But uh, I think that's how it goes on. This might go on this way, but I have to look in the plans to just double check the position, but basically that's how this goes on the outside here. So I'd like to get this kind of drilled, get it uh, match drilled into the fuselage, 
and have it ready to go. And then what I'll do is after it's painted, I'll rivet this on, I'll paint this separately, and then I won't have painted rivets. So if I ever need to change the rudder cables or whatnot, I can just drill out the rivets, take this off, and then change the cable, and then just rivet this back on. So I'll work on this too while I have the rudder on there and while I can connect up the rudder cables. Now on the back here, this is the rudder in the back of the fuselage. I have these pieces to put on here yet. And these are just kind of a curved angle. And they go, they go on the inside of here, kind of like that. And what it does is instead of just having a thin piece of aluminum as the back here, it gives it a, a nice rounded edge and it stiffens it up. So with the rudder on here, I just wanted to kind of position these and see where they go. Uh, and then I can, I can match drill these holes into here and then rivet this on the back side. I am definitely excited to get the wings attached to this airplane, but there's one thing I have to do before I attach the wings, and that is remount the holes on this steel bracket. The bolt won't quite fit in there because of the powder coating, and unfortunately I made the same mistake on this airplane as I made on my cruiser, and that is that I mounted the gear before I reamed out those holes. And the only way to get a reamer in those holes is from the bottom up, because obviously the fuselage is in the way, you can't put it in that way. But I was so excited, I think at the time, to get the gear on and have the fuselage sit on the gear that I just didn't think about reaming out those holes. So what I have to do is I think I need to get a couple people to lift the fuselage, and then I'll slide this wooden jig all the way forward so it lifts the gear up off the ground, and then I can drop the gear down, ream out those holes, put the gear back on and then uh, get the fuselage all leveled and stuff like that and then I can attach the wings. Now with the fuselage up front here, some of the other things I've been working on is just kind of getting the engine mount mounted and it's not done yet but I'm using different bolts in there. So there's just, I've been doing a couple little things on here that aren't really worth making a video or talking about but I am making progress on it. I like how it looks in the hangar with the tail on makes it look like more like a, a finished airplane. So here's what it looks like right now. It's looking good. I have a towel over the wiring just to keep the dust off of it. You know, some of you guys are kind of funny because it seems like if I take two hours to take the prop off of the pits or I take an hour to make battery cables, some of you guys think I've just totally abandoned the Super Duty project and I'm never going to finish it. And that's not the case. I love working on this airplane and I love having a project in a hangar. I am in no hurry whatsoever to finish this Super Duty. You guys might be in more of a hurry for me to finish it than I am, but I have four airplanes right now. I know you guys only know about three of them, but I have four. So if I wanna go fly, I can go fly. But I love having projects in the hangar that I can work on. You know, and the truth is, when this Super Duty is done, I don't really need the Super Duty and the Cruiser. They're very similar in what they do. Yeah, the Cruiser is maybe 10 or 15 miles an hour faster, but I don't really need two of these airplanes. So one of them is probably going to get sold. And it's not gonna be the Super Duty because this is kind of my forever bush plane that I'm gonna use all the way up in my retirement years to go fishing and camping. So that kind of means I'm probably gonna sell the Cruiser at some point. And right now, I just don't wanna sell it. I'm not ready to let it go. So that might be reason why I'm kind of going a little bit slow on the Super Duty, is I kind of don't really want to finish it. Now I will, don't worry. But like I said, I'm just in no hurry to finish the airplane. Well, everybody, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Make sure you subscribe if you want to follow along. I do appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up. I'm going to finish working on the back end here. And then I really do need to get those wings attached because my goal was to get the fuselage painted this summer. And I want to get the wings attached before the fuselage is painted. So hopefully that's coming up soon here. I do need to, to maybe get my button gear and get those, uh, the wings attached to the fuselage. So anyway, I will see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.